What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rian Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Friday. Woo-hoo! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Heck yeah! It's like a roller coaster ride. <laughs> Hell yeah! It's Friday, mother freakers. <laughs> Time to get the show on the road. Noah, play Friday by Rebecca Black. No, please don't. <laughs> please don't. Because it plays, every time you say that, the song starts playing in my head and... I can't imagine, and I imagine it does for our listeners as well, and that's the worst song to have stuck in your head sometimes. It is, but also the best. Yeah. Anyways, Francesca, mm. it's lovely to be here with you today, as it always. Is. And we're gathered here today to speak together. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah. They wouldn't hire you at church. Nope. <laughs> Anyways, it's time to get into the show, but first. Let's talk about Macy's, our favorite place to shop, especially it's holiday season, it's gift giving season. I've been telling you guys this every single episode now, guys. If you haven't bought your gifts yet, what the hell are you doing? I Mm. need to shake you. I need to wake you up right now and say, buy your goddamn gifts from Macy's.com and use promo code CHICKS and you'll get 30% off. What are you doing? Why aren't you doing it? Go do it right now. I know it sounds like I'm yelling at you. They won't get 30% off. They won't get 30% off? It's over. Never mind, guys. (laughs) Forget it. You know what? You You missed missed out. Hey, we, hey, I, we, said on Wednesday this was the last day and it was the last day and you know what so I just fooled you because I wanted to make you feel upset and tell you that you should use a yep. promo code before it runs out yep. so thank you for that friend You're welcome anyways go to macy's.com shop away you can also go to macy's.com slash chicks in the office and shop everything Fran and I have been wearing I also am wearing my shoes from macy's wow they're touching I'm sisters wearing, more um, like, like a- twins Annie <laughs> I there and you know what we do kind of wear the same size shoe, oh my so God, it is perfect. Right, it, now. they're like perfectly aligned. I am wearing. Oh my! Give a nice God, stretch. I have to shave my legs. Don't look. <laughs> oh, give me a peek. I know Harry is freak. Wow, we're so flexible. This is. You know what? Now that we know that YouTube is happening, we. We're we are we're playing up for the cameras. We are. We're, 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 we're becoming a in, bit. Yeah, we're becoming <laughs> entertainers. We're playing and we know it up it. for the cameras. But I am wearing uh Lucky Brand boots today. They are like a gray, a dark gray color, leather boots, little booties, super, super cute, and purchased at Macy's. I'm wearing Steve Madden white combat boots, mm-hmm. also purchased at Macy's. I'm usually a black combat combat boot girl. Combat boot, yeah, combat. <laughs> can't speak today. Uh, usually a white combat. No, nope, usually nope. a black <laughs> combat boot girl. But I wanted to get like white, white so that I can mix it up yeah. with some different outfits. You know, yep. change it up a little bit. Yep. So that's where I'm at today. And uh, you know, the people who don't listen on YouTube are going to get so pissed off if we keep mentioning YouTube. So well, I'm sorry you know about what? that. Is, if it you is, want to look at the boots, you know where to find them. Yeah, Chicks in the Office. Go go subscribe, guys. It's it's the holiday season. Give us a little gift of subscription. <laughs> if we, We're almost at 50, right? We got a little ways to go. We're at like 42 and a half. Okay, that's almost at, to 50. <laughs> eh, almost. Let's get to 50. Let's I mean, get to enough, 50. enough people listen where like, if everyone listening right now just went in. Yeah, that's what I'm out. saying. Just come just on, guys. Out, guys. Yeah, come on. It's holiday season. Your gift to us. Yeah, we give 50K you fifty k. We give you this YouTube. for free. <laughs> it's free to subscribe. <laughs> just get, get us to fifty k. What do we got to do? What should we do? What should we do for the people if we get to fifty k on YouTube? Well, Harry Styles will come on the podcast once we hit fifty. No, no, he no. Won't, uh, you no, just uh, made I mean, clearly, sad. like that clearly. won't happen. <laughs> Oh man. I love that. That was a great joke that just completely flops. Neither yeah. of us laughed. We got more upset. Everyone than at anything. home is probably laughing. Yeah. No, they were laughing. It was funny. It was funny, but also sad at the same time. Listen, guys, we love you so very much. We appreciate you following and listening along and sending us really nice messages. So uh it's it like I said, it's the holiday season. It's Subscribe. The least you could do. <laughs> Subscribe to the podcast as well if you don't listen on YouTube. Francesca. Yeah, that would be great. How are you doing today? What's going on? nothing like uh, nothing in a good way though you know when it's just like getting ready for the end of the year like I'm just riding it out let's let's end this year uh, I'm I'm watching a lot of television <laughs> and really not doing much of anything else it's so boring but what what is there to do why do I feel like every time I ask you how you are and, uh, and, and what's going I'm on you're just like I'm fine I'm boring like that's it's like there's I gotta wish be, I had is something there something else going on in the brain like do you ever think about things often all the time 
anything that all the time any, I do think <laughs> about things yeah but anything that comes to your mind that you're like I gotta get this off my chest mm, you know it does but then I forget <laughs> oh well you gotta start writing them down I know I you know because I'm this should be a place of like and you know what almost. there was something that I was thinking about this morning. Mm, push really hard and you'll remember and it. now I don't remember what it is. That is really unfortunate. It wasn't important, but it was something <laughs> that I definitely was thinking about. I want to say this morning when I was getting ready. And was it something about my shower? No. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I'm I'm in my <laughs> I'm, apartment. I'm looking at her very confused. I'm in my apartment alone right now. And when that starts to happen, like, I I just kind of, like, start talking to myself and then I forget, you know? Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Start writing it down. We want to know okay. more of your thoughts. Okay. What's going on in that noggin of yours? I will write it down. I have a notebook, but I forgot it at, at, at the office. But I'm, I'm bringing it home now, so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you have a notebook that yeah, you don't yeah. use. Is what no, I use it. I use it. No, I use it all the time. But I brought it to the office for the Bachelorette stuff. You mm. saw I wrote all the notes from the episode yeah, in there. Yeah. And uh, and then I forgot it here. But that was two days ago. So now I'll bring it back. Okay. So it's only missing two days. All right. Fair enough. It's and like my a journal. Christmas shopping in there. Oh, very important. Yeah. Holiday gift giving uh -huh. season for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, this happened to me the other day when we were talking. I was like, Fred, I had something to tell you. What is it? What is yeah. it? Finally remembered what it was. Yeah. Jay Alvarez's sex tape. Oh, yes. Wanted to talk about that with yep. you because I had texted you and I was like, Fran, Jay Alvarez's sex tape. Yep. You need to check it out ASAP. And then you watched it and never got back to me about it. You never, you never me told you me your thoughts Saturday on night, it. And I I'm, I'm drank appalled. A lot. <laughs> and uh, Saturday night, I, it, 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 this was what happened. I, you texted me about it. I was like, oh, mental note, remember to watch. I then got into bed Saturday night and definitely, you know, was, had, had a lovely night of drinking alcohol and uh, watched it and then went to sleep and then for, completely forgot I watched it until mm -hmm. I saw a promo for BFF's pod Mm -hmm. And they were talking about the sex tape. And I was like, holy shit, I know what they're talking about. Because I watched that. Like, the memory yeah. came flooding back into my brain. Which is when I had, like, that was when I had, then I had texted you about it then. Because I was like, oh, I totally, I forgot. I just forgot in my, in my state that we were texting about it. And then I, I remembered. <laughs> I don't know how you could watch that video and not and then not immediately text your friends after. And be like, holy fuck, that was one of the hottest things I've ever seen. Well, unless you didn't feel that way about it, but I will say it was a hot video. It was it was a, it was a music video. It wasn't even a sex tape. It was a full on music. No, did you see it? I watched I it in. It. I watched oh it. In I'm, I'm picturing it like a selfie kind. No. of. No. Oh, it's no, like a I shot. Gotta, like I got to say it is like it, it is like a music video. I. It's unreal. It's like the song from Mean Girls when they're walking down yeah. the hallway. It's so good. It's because I was drunk though. Like I watched okay. it and was like. I had thoughts about it, but but I just wanted to go to sleep at that point. <laughs> Fair enough. I just I just wanted to talk about it. No, and I was and, like, oh, and the she thing doesn't is, want to talk about it with me. You texted me all your your thoughts on it. Yeah. So in my head, when I was watching it, I was like, mm hmm, she was right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Okay. And then I and then I put my phone down. and went to sleep. Like, Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I just was shocked when yes. I said to you, yes. oh, I wanted you to watch Jay Alvarez's sex tape. And you were like, oh, I watched it already. And I was like, yes. and you didn't say anything to yes. me. But now yes. clearing up that you were drunk yep. it makes total sense that you did not reach out to me after now now yep. we've talked about it yep. we can all address that we've seen it the coconut oil yep. it was hot i saw people being some people were like oh my god it was the hottest thing ever some people were like oh that was just vanilla like i think that was a hot sex tape mm -hmm. one of the hottest sex tapes i've ever seen because usually when i see well, a sex jay tape it's is, awkward seems better than asap rocky jay is oh, way <laughs> better than asap rocky's and i love asap rocky but Noah, this thing is a goddamn feature film. It is. It's like Steven Spielberg it, directed so someone it. else was there filming it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. There was a videographer. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. This, this, this was released with a purpose. Like, this felt like... Okay, I thought it was, this, like, leaked. But he put it out? No, I'm, he I'm, did not. I don't, I don't think he personally put it out. But the way it was made made it seem like with the intention that people would see it at some point. I'm right? going to find it right now, so that's why I'm looking at my phone, Noah, by the way. Um, I'm trying to find this sex tape, but 
I actually went to his Instagram after and all of his comments were shut off. And I feel mm. like if you were put it, if you were like, oh, my sex tape leaked, wink, wink, yeah, yeah. you would leave you your would, comments right, right, on right, for that right, engagement. Right. So then, all right, well, you know, I, then okay, I, per- I got personally it. don't understand the meaning of a highly produced video <gasps> like that for the sake of it was personal taken down release this media has been disabled in response to a rep- report by the copyright owner mm. no <laughs> i'm distraught i'm sure it's on the web i'm sure somewhere. i could find <laughs> i'm it. sure it's on the web somewhere. i almost i just want to get noah's like a media but jay reaction. like jay seems very vanilla i tried to finding begin it on with Pornhub. as a man you know what i'm saying I, so it's like it was like as good I felt like it was as good as it's going to get for him. You know what I'm, you know? Also, I don't know what kind of Um, crazy ass sex people are having that they're like, oh man, this was so vanilla. It was like, that looked pretty good to me. Yeah, I, yes. Obviously, you know, it was only a minute, so I'm sure there was a lot of stuff that we didn't see. That's actually funny. I searched Jay Alvarez sex tape into Google. The first two links that come up is Pornhub 1, and then the second one is Plan Brie Uncut. (laughs) (laughs) Good stuff. (laughs) That's, oh my God, it is. That's really hilarious. But I can't, I can't find this video anywhere on, on Pornhub. Uh, I'm sorry. This is like. Well, we don't need to find it right now. It's not where this is. We've both seen it. (laughs) I, yeah, but I, I wanted Noah to see it, which is. I'll I'll report back next podcast. (laughs) Oh, I got it. Oh no! It was taken down again. Never mind. Yeah, That's yeah. the last hope. It was on Pornhub, taken down. So I guess it was. He didn't want it out there, right? Because Which I, he scrubbed the internet yeah. of it. Yeah. Which just says a lot about Jay that he wants those videos for his own personal viewing. Like that's a produced video. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta, you gotta really love yourself to make those to make a video like that if you just want to watch it for yourself. You gotta really just love the art of sex. Yeah, that's true. I think that was art. It, it was. It had a lot of elements. There was a lot of elements. A lot of great Quick shots cuts, in there. Yeah, like music. <laughs> it was I, like yeah. I would give it an eighty-nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> for the one-minute clip. <laughs> for the one-minute clip, short film. Ba- yeah. j- j- I'm not like I'm taking the sex out of it just based on the way like it was edited and value. filmed. Yeah. Production value. You it would had be great. Production value. No, you would be so impressed. Yeah. <laughs> you you would love this. I'd be like, maybe I should get into this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. hit up Jay Alvarez. Hey, production. Yeah, next you're looking. Time you need, I have some ideas. <laughs> you probably would. Uh, anyways, Jay does always put out videos that you're like, da- like all this travel stuff. You'd be like, damn, I want to go there. Damn, I want to do that. He clearly feels the same way about his about filming him sex. Yeah, he's passionate, passionate guy. Speaking of passion, this isn't really on the same subject, but I started binge watching Grey's Anatomy, oh, and it's my first I forgot time. Forgot about that. Maybe that was what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> Me watching Grey's Anatomy. Yes. Um, I did start watching. It's my first time watching first time Grey's ever. Anatomy. I when my mom uh, when I was younger, my mom would she worked on Thursdays, and then so she would record. She didn't work that late. She was home in time. I don't know yeah. why I'm giving this much information, <laughs> but she would record it so that on Friday morning when she was off, she would be able to like sit back, relax and, wa- and watch Grey's Anatomy. So sometimes when I would stay home from school, I'd catch an episode with my mom or something. Yeah. And I've seen episodes here and there. Specifically, I remember the Mandy Moore episode, but I never watched it from the from beginning. The I, I didn't know any context. I, I didn't know yeah. they were interns. You I knew nothing about it. I didn't care. No, you had no emotional connection to them. Oh my God, Noah's watching. Is that it? it? Yeah, get, I found it on Twitter. Okay, watch it. <laughs> oh, well, that does. Volume would have been up the right because place. you got to hear the the song connected to it. That's what makes it. Uh, you want me to play it? Yeah, for yourself. Yeah. Wow, these are some wild angles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it, this has like a like a homemade but still like quality production. Yeah. Yes. Like the lighting and everything. Give your live commentary. <laughs> yeah, it's well cut to the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, from the, let's get your professional opinion on the editing. Of Just this. strictly production wise, yeah, mm-hmm. good for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that gave me a good laugh. <laughs> oh. Back to Grey's Anatomy. Um, so I started watching from the beginning, and oh my god, I am so sucked in. I'm loving it. I know people have prepared me that yeah. it's going to be a wild ride. It's going to be a roller coaster a filled with ride. emotions. I'm going to cry a lot. I, I already cried a lot. I cry all the time watching. So the surgeries are tough to watch. 
You get used to it. But yes, I'm now on the eighth or eighth episode, and I'm like, all right, you know, give yeah. me the fucking head surgery. Give me yeah. the brain. Well, yeah. let's just watch Who's it. Who's your favorite character? Right now, I, I really like George just because I feel like I feel bad for him. And uh, don't spoil it, but yeah, I just yeah. feel like something really bad's going to happen to him. And See, you now guys. I'm, I'm worried that fans are going to try to spoil it for you. No, don't spoil it. No, I mean, no. I know. Because the thing like, is, is great, like, Grey's Anatomy fans love the original episodes and those original characters so much that like there's so much joy watching someone else get to experience it for the first time that there's there's respect you there. have to don't follow the season like don't look at no i won't Twitter but i already anything. know what i i've seen the stuff yeah, i don't want to spoil we've literally for texted people. about it in our group chat so she <laughs> yeah. has some kind of an idea i know what happens to a lot of the characters yes but, but you i don't know how, how or why, happens, or when. why i don't yeah. know the relationships i don't know yeah. anything and i'm all in i get why they call him mcdreamy now he's mm. dreamy i get sure that <laughs> um i wait until you meet mcsteamy oh my god there's a mcsteamy <laughs> and a mcdreamy Woo! yeah i can't take it but i can also Ellen Pompeo looks so young in the first episodes, uh, and yeah. her voice is just amazing. I have yeah. to point that out. She has such a soothing voice she to does. watch, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm I'm completely sucked in. I'm I don't think I'll watch anything else for a while now because it's gonna take me years. It's gonna take me years to finish it, this show. I would say like that's oh, what you think, but <laughs> yeah, six or seven like is when I kind of just like faded. I mean, Eight, we're currently maybe. on season seventeen, yeah. so I don't know if I'll make it that far. No. No, that's that is fair. Um, there is definitely, it seems like a connection with a lot of the original cast with what's going on in in season seventeen. If for those who that are watching it, but I I would think a lot of people dropped off around maybe ten. No, I think like hold on, I got it. I got it without the music saying, is without also saying, very good. I, without saying Grey's what Anatomy. it was, the music is good. Noah, I've yeah. I've noticed that. Season like eleven and twelve, I think. After that, I think lost a lot of people too. I think that I'll make. But you it. got a solid like ten yeah. really good seasons to watch. Oh, I'm excited. I'm I'm really enjoying it. Obviously, I cry a lot at like normal TV shows, so I'm already crying yeah. a lot at this. There's a lot of emotion. I've d- diagnosed myself with three obscure diseases already because yeah. I d- I don't feel well often, but in a way that's like. Every it's this is a perfect week to explain this. Every few weeks it'll hit me. I'll be like, God, why don't I feel right? Like I'm just feeling so down. Yeah. You know, I look in the mirror, I just I hate it. Like, oh, why do I feel this way? And then I think about that I treat my body in the most unhealthy way possible. Yeah. I don't eat right. Uh, you know, I stay up late a lot of yeah. nights, go to bed late, you know, then I'm sleeping in, I don't go to the gym, yeah. I'm drinking soda, I'm drinking iced tea, I'm not drinking enough water, yeah. I'm treating my body like absolute shit. It's, right. it's a garbage disposal. <laughs> and then I realize I'm like, oh, that's 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 definitely why you don't feel well. Yeah. But before I get to the point where I'm like, that's why you don't feel well, you need to start going to the gym, which I did start going this week, guys. Let's get on that grind if you're feeling like me. Let's get on that gym grind, okay? Let's do it together. Let's pump each other up because it's the only way we're gonna feel better, okay? Anyways, but in between that time, I realized that I am a hypochondriac. Mm. I realized that while watching Grey's Anatomy because I'm like, I've been watching the show, like I said, seven or eight episodes. I already think I have half these things. I think that yeah. when I got surgery in 2017, somebody left a towel in me. Yeah. I'm like, that had to have happened. Yeah. Why do I still feel bad? Right. Why do I not? Why is my endometriosis not fixed? Right. And then I remember it's a thing that doesn't entirely yeah. go away. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm like, all right, let's come back yep. around. But I feel like people can relate to that, like watching this show. And then all of a sudden oh, yeah. you're like, oh my God, something like this must have happened to me. I'm living with it. I'm going to die soon. Um, I'm pr- I'm gonna get past that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get through it. That. That's the only issue I'm having so far with the show, is that I'm diagnosing myself too much. But as you go on, I'm sure you just forget about it. You you definitely do because there's just so much, like there's there's just so many that you're just like oh I, you're now you're just watching as a as a as a viewer and it is fun because they do have a lot of great like guest appearances that you forget were even on and then you watch back and you're like oh my god like this person was a patient this person was a patient so there's some there's there's some good ones i think you are going to love i mean it's the best it's really one of the best shows ever who are your guys favorite characters oh um i definitely like george a lot but i'm trying to think back to like the original i like shepherd or not shepherd uh what's the 
Derek. Bailey, Bailey. Oh, Bailey. Bailey, I like Bailey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bailey's great. I've always Hank liked Bailey. Yeah, yeah no, I've I always like liked um Christina was one of my favorites. And I want to say oh great. yes, she is phenomenal. And I do like a lot of the I do like a lot of the the newer characters. It's hard because like there's the original one. Like I like Joe. She's been around, but I mean Joe's been around for a long time. And Lexi, not there yet, but yeah. How did you guys feel about Catherine Heigl? Is he? I like her character in the show. I think. Yeah, I I I always liked Izzy. Uh, Izzy m- made some. M- ish, uh, Izzy made some mistakes I didn't like, but. <laughs> Okay. Other than that, <laughs> yeah, you get hard that I don't. know It's really yes, yeah. it's I know really, it's hard. Yeah. It is hard. Like I can't really give reasoning behind a lot of things. I think my prob. I like Izzy right now. Like yeah. I have no. I, I'm like I said. I'm not too deep into yeah. it. And right now, I like Izzy. But I will say, sometimes it's hard to watch Katherine Heigl thinking about all the times that people have said she's difficult to work with. Yeah, yeah. And and now yeah. I'm like. Oh. I know you have to think of her as like not her and as solely Izzy. Right. It's yeah. like I didn't work on the show. Uh-huh. I shouldn't have any problems with her. Yep. yep. So yep. it is what it is. I'm enjoying it. Hop on the ride with me, guys. If you haven't watched Grey's Anatomy yet, which I'm sure you have, because I feel like I'm the only person yeah. who hasn't. Uh, come on, come on yeah. the train with me. Let's go on this journey together. Or, or so if you great. have watched and you've been wanting to rewatch, then start rewatching it. It's a good time for it. Yeah, it's a good time. People have been concerned about me though. They Why? were messaging me like, are you okay? Because when I watch Grey's Anatomy, it's because I'm like depressed and not oh. feeling well. And I'm like, well, I've never seen it. Yeah. That's, That's why like, I'm watching right. it. Like, <laughs> I think people think that when you go back and watch it for like the third time, like I've, yeah. I've watched, I've watched it back from the beginning, not all the way to where we are now, but probably to about like nine or 10, like I think probably twice now. So it, now it's, it's a, a comfort thing so I get what people are saying then you go back and watch from the beginning again but it's a must when you've never done it before it's a whole different experience yeah it's definitely something I'm enjoying I, yeah. I don't even want to be here right now I'd rather be yeah, home yeah. <laughs> watching Grey's Anatomy yeah. so so let's get on with Fair. the show let's, let's get in do that. let's get into today's topics we will oh, be- we didn't even say it Taylor Swift has an album coming oh, out. Oh my god! Sorry. Oh, okay, well, Taylor Swift has an album coming out, and we're not going to be able to talk about we're, it because we'll talk about it on Monday. We'll talk about it on Monday. We will go through it. Unfortunately, we do you know record the show before midnight on yeah. Thursdays. So I mean, even yeah. then, you'd have to like wait until like one o'clock to like have listened yeah, to the whole and thing. To, and then, to like, be honest, I like having the weekend to digest the album because i will listen multiple times because the first you listen one time you have your like knee jerk gut reaction then you listen a couple times and maybe saw like your favorites change or you have different opinions so i i I like sitting with it for the weekend we'll talk about it for monday's episode but freaking taylor swift man what she's just we gotta pay her overtime or something. Yeah, like, what well, we is don't. Going Somebody on? has to. Oh no, we don't it'll have be the funds. me when I end up buying her <laughs> m- more merch, <laughs> right? Because uh, it's funny because like my folklore stuff came like last week. Like my sweatshirt <laughs> and my vinyl came like last week. So can't wait to order the Evermore stuff, and it'll come in four months <laughs> when she puts out another album. Yep, at this pace. <laughs> yeah, very impressive by Taylor Swift. I mean. I did say in one of our videos, and I messed up. I said I don't remember the last time somebody did this. Ariana Grande did do it with yeah. Sweetener and Thank You Next, and Bad Bunny released like three albums this year. So it is possible, but yeah. it is shocking because it is Taylor Swift, and things are more calculated with her. Right. Should a lot and of planning. Lover was like not that you know Lover yeah. wasn't long ago either, so it feels like even more. Right, Lover was in the uh, end of 2019. So yeah, yeah, it has been a short amount of time with three albums now and I feel like with Taylor Swift we've usually seen more calculated moves you know easter eggs here and there where people are picking up on it she did post a picture that she did post before folklore a few weeks ago and everyone was like wow is Taylor Swift releasing new music and we all 
had thought that it was her re-recording her songs and yeah. that well, was she it. She said that at that award show. So do you think she was she lying did. or do you think no, she No, no, no. I think she this? is working on re-recording yeah. her new yeah. music but was also making a new album. Right. I think maybe she felt comfortable sharing that because she did have this other little secret yeah. that she was holding and on that to. And Ry- like, that Ryan Reynolds ad for MASH that he had come out, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it was with Love Story playing in the background but it was the re-recorded version of Love Story. So she is clearly doing that as well and she had said you know my friend ryan reynolds had asked me for (laughs) for this and happily obliged and so she's definitely doing that but on top of that is all at once and was like here's half we'll put it out now as folklore and then the other half is another album that's very possible uh but i feel like i i feel like she wait might have waited i think she loved making folklore so much and it was so different for her and then she put out folklore and saw the response from it and was and everybody loved it so much that she was like oh i can i can do this again she made it i can live in this genre again and like keep doing Mm -hmm. that folk when did she start recording folklore it was like she said it It was probably like april April ish so then april she put out in july she could have started recording like end of july a new album yeah put it out yeah now. yeah or maybe she these were songs that just didn't make the first cut and yeah, then she exactly. realized that yeah. she ended up liking them yeah so either way yeah props to taylor swift really excited to listen to the album i also think the time that this is coming out is more fitting than when folklore came out in july obviously folklore is yeah. great and it and people still loved it even though it came out in the middle of the, s- the summer now we're you know fall winter months yeah. we're reaching that point cozy where people mode, will listen to time. folklore to ever to ever more back to back it's yeah. like we're getting real cozy vibes from taylor swift yeah definitely so you guys listening i hope that you listen to this episode and then <laughs> then listen to yeah make us a priority that out. <laughs> yeah. or you, you can listen to the album first and then us that's okay oh you're so sweet friend. Yeah. <laughs> um all right let's get into today's topics we have olivia jade joins the red table red she table talk to the table she went to the table she brought the college admissions scandal to yeah, the table she brought it to the table pretty intense jessica simpson announces that she will be making a show about her life in mm-hmm. her early 20s very exciting and we had taisha go on ellen ellen's a monster i'm confused <laughs> Ellen's confused. a freaking monster, okay? And we're going to talk about it because some shit was revealed that I yeah. don't think should have been revealed yeah. just yet. The, the, the season's not over and it feels like it is. And we also have an awesome interview with Jen Atkins, celebrity hairstylist. If you guys follow all the celebrities we do, then you know who Jen Atkins is. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, we had so much fun talking to her. You'll get to know a lot. And her new book is out. So yeah. let's get into it, starting off with Olivia Jade. Now, I know I keep mentioning holiday season, it's gift giving season, and we're talking about big gifts here, but you don't want to forget about the stocking stuffers. Stocking stuffers are also very important. And if you're looking for the ultimate stocking stuffer for this holiday season, look no further because our sponsors, Manscaped, have the tools to make you win this year's holiday stocking stuffer. Manscaped is the only brand dedicated to below the waist grooming, you know what I mean? And hygiene products and great news, they just released their products across Europe, Canada, and Australia so you can show shop manscaped listen guys i'm gonna i'm gonna name a few products for you okay and we all know that if you have a boyfriend or if you're a guy listening to this show then you want to be you want to be well groomed you want to be looking out there like a hairy monster animal like we want to be well groomed and hey it's important it's important i actually don't mind a little hair but we're just saying but clean it night, up clean clean it yes. nice clean it nice yeah. make it nice make, make it, it nice. even make, make it, it nice. nice here are a few of their products that are prime stocking stuffers they have the crop preserver which is a ball deodorant guys the name speaks for itself mm-hmm. makes your balls and your dick smell good we have the crop reviver which is a it's a it's a ball toner it's a spray on toner <laughs> we do no, this ad for on dime package too and i was like i'm gonna say the word balls so yeah. many times guys balls <laughs> I, 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 the, the crazy thing about this is that I'm making a you hand gesture like as if are, I got balls yep, in my hand yep. and that's what makes this better. Yeah. Um, the ball toner is a spray on toner that will give your balls a little slice of heaven with their aloe vera and hazel abstracts. Who doesn't want their balls mm-hmm. smelling nice? And I mean, ladies, we all know that when you go down on a guy, you you would like for him to smell clean. nice. Clean. You would like for him to smell clean. Mm-hmm. You don't want it to be smelling like McDonald's down there. We also got a body wash. <laughs> 
I don't know. I just thought of something that Whoa, would be like, okay. if you went down, yeah, you that, smelled that's McDonald's. That's definitely not what like, you want to smell. That's not a cheeseburger. Yeah, that's nope. your dick. Yep. I don't want that. <laughs> um, you know, they have all these things. They have ball wipes, body wash. Um, they have the weed whacker, which is for your nose, and it's an ear and nose and ear hair trimmer, which provides uh, proprietary skin safe technology to get rid of those nasty nose hairs. And let's not forget about the best trimmer for your booty, your balls, and your body. It's the Lawn Mower 3.0. It trims, uh, you know, everything, like I said. Three Bs. Yeah. <laughs> the three Bs, your booty, your balls, and your body. Um, these formulas are all vegan, cruelty-free, dye-free, sulfate-free, and paraben-free, so you know their products are legit. You can get 20% off free shipping at manscaped.com with code CHICKS. If you don't get this product just for the sake that I said balls so many times, yeah. I don't know who you are. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with code CHICKS. Be the ballsiest gift giver this year with Manscaped. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Jade went to the table she, she did it this was a haunting promo like it was the the video teaser of this moment was almost better than the actual interview itself mm -hmm. of just seeing the red table and like the the camera spins and like bam olivia jade is sitting in it it's like olivia jade she's coming to the table and and she did look this was like her first interview she said like ever uh, she went to the table. <laughs> Can I say that? Yeah. I think you and Olivia Jade look alike. I, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, it's a compliment. <laughs> it is very much a compliment. It's, she's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, In the promos, I was like, damn, that kind of looks like Fran. Thank you. She, w she did wear a really nice outfit. It was funny. Yeah. Like, at it the wasn't end the outfit that made me think yes. you looked like her. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I don't wear like, hot pink silk yeah. pajama set. So yes, that does make sense. But um, I have, have been told that once before and I was very flattered. So thank you. I will take that. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge compliment. Yeah, she is very, she's very beautiful. She, she, uh, and it was funny at the end of the whole thing, like it, not necessarily a blooper, it was more like an outtake where they, uh, the whole squad was like, by the way, your outfit is really nice. Like even Gammy was like, I don't want to say it during the day. Yeah, because like, Gam Gam was uh, yes. not having Olivia Jade's shit. She, yeah. uh, listen, well, basically what- It was we well wanna, balanced. Yeah, if we want to sum up what happened on the Red Table Talk, it was that Olivia Jade wants to not necessarily clear her name. She doesn't want people to feel bad for her. She knows that she's not going to get people to pity her. Yeah. She just wants a second chance. She, she doesn't want her to life on. to be ruined. She wants to move on. And Gam Gam yeah. uh, does not feel bad for Olivia Jade. She made that no. quite apparent during this. Jada Pinkett Smith was the one who wanted to have her on. Jada and Gam Gam fought about it. Yep. They did not. Gam Gam did not want her. So it was it was uncomfortable uncomfortable for Olivia Jade. But it should have been because obviously she fucked up and, yeah. and the family fucked up. And what they did showed an enormous amount of privilege yeah. obviously people are not that privileged not everybody can be like olivia jade and aunt becky and pay your way through school and yeah. pretend you're on the rowing team that's just not how life works and yep. to her that is how life works because they're rich and famous mm -hmm. and they just live a different life than other people do i think that number one don't feel bad for her obviously i don't think you feel bad for her either no. i don't think anybody really does or should when it comes to like hey let's give her a second chance i think that's fair yeah. i think that's i think that's completely fair yeah. because we live in a day and age where people are not allowed to make mistakes and i think it's stupid i think the only way you grow as a person the only way you learn as a person right. is if you make a mistake and you fuck up and you can learn from it if olivia jade if, if they never got caught think about how olivia jade would go on with her life yeah the same way that they were doing paying people whatnot now that this has happened and they screwed up she has a chance to become a better person, learn mm -hmm. more about her privilege, learn about these things, and get a second chance at it. Go back to YouTube, do yeah. your thing. I, I, I think we can acknowledge that they fucked up and it was a very bad thing to do, and we do not feel bad. Yeah. But also, I think we can also acknowledge, hey, uh, you know, we're not going to destroy this girl's life for the rest yeah. of time because this happened. Yeah, I agree with you. It's. It's, um, and you know, the way she explained it too, it was like, I think she was just living her life where she didn't give a shit about anything else mm -hmm. going on in the world. And she kind of acknowledged that. She was like, I, I, I'm in this bubble and this is just like what, what people did. Like 
parents donated to schools and that's how they got into schools and and uh how when the news broke it was less of her pissed off and more of her confused because she didn't see why that was even a problem in the first place because Mm. in her world where's the problem that's that's what happens that's what people do Mm -hmm. so it does seem like she has tried to learn a lot or and also um reflect because it, it was a good point she was so silent for so long because of the ongoing legal cases and everything that everyone was like she doesn't care she like mm-hmm. what's she's hiding the whole the whole thing she hasn't really apologized so this was her way to to apologize and it was a good it was a good setting for her because she did it wasn't like she went on tv or or another interview where it was like a plan like hey let's hold her hand and tell her that it's okay and everything's mm-hmm. going to be okay because you know there there did feel it, it did feel like there was more compassion coming from Jada and Willow than there was Jada's mother, Gammy, Gam Gam. And she definitely was upfront with her that like, hey, I, I more like I just hope you now see what your privilege has given you and how different this story would have been if um you and your family were it was a black family or a family, you know, trying to kind of see the disparity disparities there that maybe she had not thought of at at that time so she was bringing a whole different perspective to it on how she, her and her life viewed mm-hmm. this situation and jada did the same and will did the same so which is why i think people really want to have their like it looked like olivia jade's team w- approached them to have her come mm-hmm. on this setting and uh game had said like we don't want to this girl to come on and have to come to three black women have us like hold her hand and make her feel better that's not our job to make her feel better about what she did right so they the whole thing they handled i thought very well olivia got to say her piece and um explain herself a little bit and talk about how she wants to you know move on in the future and acknowledge Mm -hmm. how all this went down and everybody voiced their opinion and got to say what they wanted to say to her and it it seemed hopefully therapeutic in a way and yeah now she can hopefully hopefully move on it's just she's a young she's a young girl who doesn't she should be able to continue with her life and you know what she wants to do with her life without constantly not like being blocked from doing it because of this event right i actually think being reminded of what she did is going to happen forever yeah. and that's i think well, she, yeah, i think it's, she's going to live with it's it a forever. good punishment for yeah. you know what i mean for me it's like all right we know that's not going to go away you could say all you want oh you know the people footprint that. is there it's like, going to the, everything it, on it's the always going to be there yeah. it's all if she makes a youtube video she posts on instagram it's always going to be there yeah. but let her do it let her post her youtube videos let her you know if you don't want to follow her don't follow her if you don't want to be a fan don't be a fan but I feel like the like you said, the way they went about it, the perspective that Gam Gam gave yeah. on her end was really good because I feel like that opens up other people's minds to see what other people may have thought about it. You know what I mean? So I feel like that was good. The way Jada handled it, the way Willow handled it, Will, Willow and her around the same age. Yeah. All a good thing. It's not like she went on Ellen and it was a happy go lucky interview right, and they, right. you know, swept it under the rug. It yeah. was a real real deal. And she deserved to get a little pushback, oh, which is 100%. why, which was why she that pushback. was the, a good spot for her and to it do it. Help her become a better person by yeah. getting that pushback. Yeah. And I and I do think that, you know, like we said, yeah, no, nobody feels bad for her. Nobody should feel bad yeah. for her. And no, but yeah, like I said before, we just live in a place where nobody's allowed to make mistakes or do anything wrong. And if you're not allowed to make mistakes and do anything wrong, then you don't grow as a person then right. then you just oh if you make a mistake that's it your life stops your you're, life's you're over. fucking your done hopes and dreams your are hopes done. and dreams completely crushed <laughs> yeah. that's it you're done you're done for you're not allowed to make a mistake everyone yeah. has to be perfect nobody's perfect yeah everybody makes mistakes in their life some may be bigger than others yep. when you're rich and famous they're probably they probably are bigger than others yep and i do think that her mentioning the fact that she didn't see what was wrong with it at first was kind of a, a big move by her because mm-hmm. 
anybody could have gotten up there and say immediately when it, when it all came crashing down, I knew that we had fucked up. She said straight up, I didn't see what was wrong. And a lot of people I think are picking that apart being like, what the fuck is wrong? How could you not see what was wrong? How could you not see yeah. what was wrong? She said straight up, I didn't, but I now, I, in a now I do. I live, yeah. I lived in a bubble. That's, that's the best thing that you can ask for her. You yeah. can't ask for anything more than like her being like, yeah, I, I'm fucking rich and just and around privileged a, a and, bunch of other rich and white. Kids I didn't who know did anything else. And this is how I grew up. Yeah. A lot of it has to be blamed on the parents. Yeah. Straight up. You yeah. raised your kids that way. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. If they're being raised this, this certain way and they're never around anything else and you never tell them, Hey, other people out there don't get this. Yeah. Other people are not. Hey, just a reminder. We're very lucky. We're very privileged. Yeah. Then they're going to grow up thinking, that everything they do is fine and normal. Yeah. So it is what it is at this point, I think. The college admission scandal, I think it's just got to, we, we all got to stop talking about it. Aunt Becky's in jail. Yeah. Like, I think it's, it is what it is at this point. And yes, it is suck. It sucks. I just want to remind everyone, we're not saying what they did. Because no, people, no. I feel like, we talked about it on the group chat, and I saw messages from people being like, you guys said that, you know, you, uh, you feel bad feel bad for we never said we feel bad for her that is not what i'm saying whatsoever i don't feel bad at all i'm just saying people are allowed to like come back and not have their life entirely ruined in a situation like this you know she didn't murder somebody yeah and if you just if it bothers you that much then you know avoid everything she does (laughs) like it's you know don't pay attention and and let her, I don't know, continue with her life in in some way. And I guess people do think she should be punished in a way that like that YouTube career and all the things that she wanted, she shouldn't be allowed to have now. But I, she does seem like she learned from this experience. And now she definitely got a lot of help with this interview. I will oh, say yeah. that. Like, there's we no must way. Point that out. Yeah, there's no way that you go into your first interview. It's red table talk. You got Jada Pickett Smith. You got these powerful women in front of you that you don't have some publicist or hired someone to to help her with what she said and whatnot. So hopefully, she really means everything that that she mm-hmm. said and is looking forward to being a positive influence and taking what she has learned from this and using it publicly yeah in the future right and if she does get youtube deals or whatever it may be take some of that money help some other people out yeah. in a way that they couldn't be helped out right you know what i mean you were helped by your parents getting to school right. use a lot of people and, can't pay for ha- school yeah. use and that and use and, it to benefit others. Yeah, use it yeah. to benefit people because then people will be like, okay, she does understand what she did wrong. She wants to help people now. She has to do something to that effect, I think, yeah. in the future um, because she can't just go and start making vlogs and makeup tutorials again. Yeah. She, there has to be some yeah, right. The, ca- the content, The content has to show that she has learned something exactly and, and not all the time she she yes. she should make fun videos yes. or whatever but show Doesn't people have to be serious all the time show but. people that you care and that yeah. wasn't like a performative act yeah. by going on red table talk definitely it has been announced that jessica simpson will be creating a tv show about her life in her early 20s i'm so excited about this I know that I yawned into the. I know that I yawned I into the microphone. I was like, "You're as excited, I spoke huh?" Those words, but um, there's must be a lack of oxygen in this room. And you know, I I really actually I'm very excited about this. When I saw this, I like messaged the link to like six different people, texted, yep. sent it to different uh, group group chats, and you guys. And I was like, "I'm so fucking excited about, excited for this because open book." Her memoir was one of the, my favorite things that I've read this year. So to now watch that be turned into a scripted series is awesome because it gives it even more drama. You know, like mm-hmm. it's not like they're doing a documentary about her where they're trying to like really stick to the story. Like they can take Jessica Simpson's t- mid 20s, which were dramatic AF, and make them even more dramatic as a whole scripted deal. So it's awesome. And Jessica, I'm happy for Jessica. I feel like she's just racking in the dough also. Like this is a big deal, great deal for her. 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to watch this whenever it comes out. I'm excited yeah. to see who will play Jessica Simpson. Yes. I mean, who's going to play Jessica Simpson Iconic. in her fucking prime? Yeah. It's got to be somebody who looks exactly like Jessica Simpson. Because Jessica Simpson, my God. Yeah. Like, Holy shit. One of the hottest girls to ever exist. Yeah. Um, also, Nick Lachey, John Mayer. We're get, we're, we're going to be getting a lot of juicy stuff. Yeah. And I'm excited to just watch it as a TV show. Like, her life is so good that it could be made into a TV show. Yeah. That's just... You know who I actually... Maybe not the dream, but also the dream. <laughs> yes. Very true. I feel like... I feel like, I don't know, it's so hard because I'm trying to think of who would be so great to play them and I almost think they have to go with people that we don't know. You know, maybe not like huge big name people, but I almost think like a like a Josh Bassett, like, Josh, like a Joshua Bassett would be so good as like a Nick Lachey, but I think he's too young. He's too young. I think they would be like much, I appear older, mid-20s-ish. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like they have to go unknowns here because yeah, that, yeah. If you get so somebody too, that we've seen before many times, and then they start playing these iconic people, yeah. it's going to get confusing. I think that they'll be able to find unknown actors because yeah. there are so many talented people on this earth that don't ever get picked up for anything. Yeah. They're out there. They'll find somebody who looks like Jessica Simpson. They'll find a guitar player to play John Mayer. They'll find a Nick Lachey. But I think that it has to be unknowns or people that haven't been any in anything that is too known yeah now there's actually going to be there's actually going to be two things wow i didn't okay so there is the the um scripted series and then also an unscripted docu-series that's fantastic. It was Jessica Simpson posted on her Instagram and said, I am humbled and honored to partner with Amazon Studios to bring my story and heart to life on the screen and executive produce a fictionalized coming of age series about my mid 20s, a new intimate unscripted docu series with music as a key component and two essays where I will share my soul and perspective while holding your heart close to mine. I'm a huge TV fan and many of my favorite shows live on Amazon. So the gift of this unprecedented collaboration is the brightest visible dream for me. From our first meeting, I had a visceral connection to every member of this team. I know that parts of my life have been extraordinary, but I also know that many of my struggles are universal. I hope to continue the mission I set out to accomplish in writing Open Book, to inspire others to be entertained, moved, and empowered, to walk through fear and come out on the other side even stronger. And then Amazon Studios um, said that Simpsons' raw, unscripted docuseries will feature, quote, never-before-seen personal footage shot over the last decade and will explore the highs and lows of Simpsons' life, including her singing career, her journey to sobriety, starting a family, the rise of creating a billion-dollar business, and finding her voice. The fictionalized drama series takes place after Simpsons' divorce from Lachey and will be about the journey to discovering herself. Music will be a key component of both the scripted and unscripted series. As for the essays, the first will focus on motherhood and the second will focus on gratitude. This is a huge deal for her, like covering all aspects of her life. Absolutely. And I'm very interested and I feel like everyone will be. Jessica Simpson has lived quite the life. She's been in the tabloids and the media yeah. ever since I've been born, it feels yeah. like. So I'm very interested in this and also good for her. Like you said, major fucking deal. A lot major of money deal. coming through here. You know, she's got her brands and, and other things, but this is really cool for Jessica Simpson. I'm excited. Yeah, it's major. And to think that like music to be involved in this will be really cool too because I'm thinking that whoever they get to play like the scripted version of Jessica Simpson could be then put on the path to be Jessica like a real life Jessica Simpson you know what I'm you get like absolutely she gets this part where she's playing Jessica Simpson and gets to perform and sing and then that could catapult her career to a level of like Jessica Simpson so it's very cool um we'll see who who they cast and what uh what they make out of this but great stuff right a lot of times and I I don't think this will happen with Jessica Simpson because she is Jessica Simpson but when you see somebody play somebody so famous or whatever it is you then become obsessed with that person as the person they play yeah, like I'm yeah. thinking this is so wildly not even in the same range but the dirt motley yeah. crew i knew you were gonna say that i oh i wish i said it before you said it because i knew you were gonna say that the guy who yes. plays nikki six yeah 
obsessed with him as Nikki Six in the movie. I'm yeah. like, he's so fucking hot and I love him. But Nikki Six in real life, I'm not like, oh my God, Nikki yes. Six. Yes. But I'm like, Nikki Six in the dirt, please yes. give him to me. Yes. So I feel like sometimes that happens. But with Jessica Simpson, yeah. I don't know. You know, we'll get we'll get both, but I do understand what you're saying in the aspect of this person may become so big that they'll yeah. be like Jessica Simpson. Exactly. Jessica Simpson this year was, you know, getting this deal is so amazing for her. She Douglas Booth is his name, by the yes, way. Douglas I didn't Booth, mention yes. who played du- him. You know Doug, what my um, favorite role that Douglas Booth has performed in? Enlighten me. LOL, the Miley Cyrus yes. and Demi Moore movie. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Love it. Yeah. S- just great stuff. Great stuff. Great Lol. stuff. <laughs> but he's way hotter in the dirt. Yeah. Which is fair That's enough. Fair. He plays a rock star. That's fair. He's pretty hot in, in Yeah, LOL. no. Great looking, great looking I guy. I gotta watch that movie too. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, and the last thing I wanted to say was that Jessica Sim- Like, I just feel like whatever Jessica Simpson touches also turns to gold. Mm-hmm. That this is such a great deal and hopefully turns out to be so great. She is now the highest selling female pop culture celebrity author of all time with that with her memoir open book i know that was like a lot of titles female pop culture celebrity author that was a lot of titles and entirely too specific to be like a huge category no yeah but like, I, I don't really you think know it's one of those things that's like yeah it's like like she feel just, like just the best female celebrity author, author. But yeah I, I get what you're saying female celebrity that celebrity that's not maybe female like politician can maybe yes. fall under celebrity right. category so i yeah. get i get the clarifications but that you know she's like i said it turns to gold so this can't wait i hope it i hope they start like now clock's ticking let's 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 get on let's Let's start casting we need the yeah Yeah. you guys need us in the department yeah because we'll do it a couple casting directors we got we're available taisha went on the ellen show and ellen did a little interview and ellen asked some questions that went a little too far for our liking yeah because she asked who the best kisser was, and she it was like a toss up between first of all Blake she Moines. She said four names. Yeah, she said four names. Blake Moines was thrown into there. Yeah. Okay, I guess that's the credit that, we're giving well, Blake explains Moines. A lot. Explains why he's there. Yeah. And then she asked, "Who's husband material? Yeah. Who out of these men that are left? There's seven guys that are there. Yeah. Who's husband material?" Tasha says Zach C. Yeah. What are we doing watching the rest of the show then? Because you don't get up there yeah. and say. Zach C's husband material and then not get engaged to Zach C. What are you going to get engaged to another guy? And then they're going to watch the Ellen show and say, hey, you didn't say I was husband, husband material. There, There is a possibility that, I don't know. <laughs> there is a possibility it that it's not. Throw people off. Yes, it, that, it is possible because Zach may be the mo- I'm really going to dig into some semantics here, but like he may be the most husband material but maybe not the most husband material for Tasha. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, we both have boyfriends. There are guys out there <laughs> that I would be like, oh, he's boyfriend Where are you material. Going with this? <laughs> no, like, I would say he's boyfriend material. Okay. Do I necessarily want to date him? No. But he falls in the category of boyfriend material. I just think that you don't say. When it comes to I, the bachelor, I see bachelor, both sides. Like, <laughs> I think that like, you you, you think, say you, you can't. Do you think Riley would be like okay with that if they're no, you, together? You, you, Definitely you not see, Riley. Yeah. You, <laughs> you at this stage, you are asked that question and you do not answer that one. No, That's you say, skip. "Oh, all the guys are so great." Yeah, um, you know, they all could be husband material, right. or you throw more names out there yeah. like she did with Best Kisser. You know, Zach C, Ben, oh, ben Riley, yeah, yeah, all yeah. of them. All yeah. of them are husband material. They're yeah. great guys. Easy way to get out of that one. Yeah. I personally think she's so smitten with Zach C that she couldn't even hold it in any longer. She the, she the forgot, answer came yeah, to her she immediately. forgot she was on the Ellen <laughs> show and was like, Zach C is my husband. Right. I mean Ellen's out here the Ellen show's out here tweeting like did Tasha just spoil the bachelorette? Like just they're Ellen's thriving off of this. <laughs> it's Ellen, un, it's the just, Ellen show isn't live, is it? No. Like so there had to be bachelor producers who like let that air. Like they could have been like, No, don't put that in. That is true, but also do you think Ellen is oh, listening yeah. to that? No, like no, Ellen gets that sound bite and she's like, that's going yeah, in. And they no. probably told her beforehand, like, don't ask questions that would give stuff away and she's like Fuck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we listen to people like that, not Ellen. Yeah. <laughs> when when somebody right. tells us to cut something out, we cut it out. Right. When when Ellen gets told to cut something out, she's like, "This is perfect for guys. my show. I'm yeah. airing it." So yeah. I think that 
that was the case here. I I get what you're trying to say, Fran, with the yes. whole you know boyfriend. I'm just ma- trying to spin I, it where because this seems have, so obvious. If you were giving me Hank with a bunch of people and asked who would be boyfriend material, I would say Hank. You know, right? Her husband is in that group, right? So right. you don't pick the person that's not yep. your husband. It was a very it was very quick response as well yeah. like it would, didn't even really look like she thought about it for that long so I think that she's just smitten and, and is over it and is like I'm in love and I want this to be yeah seen and I want people to know at this point um but also I wish that wouldn't have happened because yeah I now feel pretty confident that Zaxi is gonna win to I be don't honest I felt confident in that already we know we that did. you felt that yes but I feel like we all kind of did but there's always that possibility that yeah you, you know we thought Look, so many there, times we didn't think yeah. when, when it came to Hannah Ann and Peter, we were yeah, like, yeah, there's that's no true. way that's true. Peter yep. actually proposes to Hannah Ann. Right. And he did that. And he so did. it was yep. like, whoa. Yeah. Yep. You know? Correct. And with Hannah Brown, we were like, oh my God, she picked Jed. Yeah. It's like, you knew it. I knew it because of the basketball shot throwback. <laughs> Jed over Tyler C was is, really is, just one it's of the still worst one of the most decisions <laughs> of all time. It's it's one of the most mind boggling things ever. We're not gonna get into it though. We're gonna move right past God, that. But um, like, we have to make like a docu-series about that no, decision. No. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> what if I told you? Yeah. <laughs> what if I told you? This man was rejected. Uh, yeah. 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 So look. You're right. I stu- I do think that this show has magical powers and we will all be watching the fantasy dates on, you know, next week. Not this week, but in two weeks Sorry or if you're whatever. watching the YouTube. My bra keeps little popping nip out of my shirt. Action? No, you're good. <laughs> I'm a whore. I, I would have I told you if it was a problem. Okay. Thank you. And it was just tasteful enough. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were enjoying it. Yeah. Good. And it was for you. Go, yep, go thanks. to the YouTube. Yep. And uh, what was I going to say? Oh, the show has magical powers where when we are watching these fantasy dates, our brains are going to be like, oh, maybe she does pick someone else. Like, yeah. you know, they always get us at the end where you really think there's a possibility that she will not pick Zaxi because he does seem like the front runner right now. But I, who knows? Also, she did shed light on Spencer. Yeah, Spencer, she said she had the, mo- the most awkward, Ellen asked who she had the most awkward conversation with and, and or no, it wasn't even who she had the most awkward conversation. It was like, what was the most awkward conversation, whatever. And she was just like, Spencer, no explanation, no nothing. Right. She just said Spencer. So maybe we didn't watch that happen, but that does explain why we never saw Spencer again. It totally makes sense. And that's like our French Montana, yeah. you know? Yep. If you, it's like, who's the worst in French Montana? Yep. She just knew it's Spencer. one of those things. It must've been so awkward. It was engraved in her memory. Yeah, so about, awkward they right. didn't air it. That's, <laughs> that's I wonder if how really, you know it was bad. I wonder if she had questioned her judgment at all after that, you know? Because she's been so serious about, like, the guys questioning her integrity and all mm-hmm. that. And sh- her first impression was Spencer. Like, this this guy. I think it was solely based off looks. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. And I uh, also quickly want to mention that Reality Steve <laughs> had... Tasha's ex-husband on his podcast and he obviously paints a different picture of their relationship than what Tasha has painted on television and that they were having very rough times before he had cheated um and doesn't matter he didn't feel like she was giving enough to that relationship and then he cheated and it came home and told her and they tried to work on it it just didn't end up working it just wasn't there so there's always there there's always two sides of the story. You're not going to get like I just can't imagine you would get Tasha on TV to be like, "Yeah, it's my fault I I got divorced." And and for this guy to go on and be like, "Yeah, it's my fault." Like they're both going to blame each other. You know who I call what I call people who are in a relationship and the relationship gets tough and then they go and cheat? Yeah. Cowards. Yeah. Just break up with them. Yeah. Just a divorce. Yeah. Just say, "Hey, it's over." Yeah. I, this isn't working. I hate when people do that, you know? When when the going gets tough and you're like, I'm not getting any action, we're fighting, nothing's going well. Yeah. Call, this guy call is clearly quits before right. you cheat. This guy is clearly annoyed but, enough. Alas, we have millions mm-hmm. of affairs everywhere. Yeah. Because people are cowards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is true. But yeah, I guess he felt the need to do this interview for the sake of um Taisha repeating that, 
you know, marriage ended because of cheating or this really like that seemed, and that's what we all thought, that that seemed like that was a really big thing. And he wa- he wanted to clear his name or the air or whatever because he says it affects his family and his girlfriend now and mm-hmm. to have all these that have that picture painted of him and that's definitely true but I feel like Tasha also has tried not to talk about him mm-hmm. that much on the show where she has given like the least amount possible that flies to be like where she does have to mention that their cheating happened their cheating occurred and when that happens in your marriage like that's obviously she's going to hold on to that so yeah maybe she's not ex- explaining the whole story on TV but she didn't really want that in the first place. She didn't really want him. She she has said before she didn't really want him to be like a storyline in all this. This is her new life. This is a new love story for her. So can't imagine she was happy with uh, him going on this podcast. Can't imagine that. And I can't imagine where we got his name popping it up into a trailer. I still don't yeah. understand why this happened. It doesn't seem at this point that it's even happening. No. That Did was ABC just, so, just do that to fuck with know. everybody? Because uh, so confused. Weird. It was weird. So weird that her ex-husband's name just ended up in the <laughs> caption by accident. <laughs> like, How does that happen? That's not an accident. That's We can't call that an accident. Yeah. That was on purpose. On purpose. Just to send us all chasing our tails. Yep. All right. Well. Do you have anything else? I don't know. I don't have anything else to say about it. No, I, I don't. Yeah. I, you know, people are still going on Ellen. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. You know, she's the be kind lady. She's kind. She's letting yeah. people on her show. And Tasha basically just gave us the answer, in my personal opinion. Yeah. Listen, I want to be shocked. Let me be wrong. Yeah. Let Let's us be, be wrong. Shocked. Well, Let's... I don't want to be shocked because I want sex. Yeah. Win, but <laughs> yeah. Knock our socks off. But it with would the be answer. very shocking at this point, I, th- I think. Right. But we'll see what happens. Hey, if we get some love. Then we all win, don't we? (laughs) So true. (laughs) We have our interview with the wonderful Jen Atkin coming up. And guys, this woman is constantly, constantly moving. She is a high-powered businesswoman. And I hope that when she gets a moment to relax and chill, she's cracking open a Coors Light because that's the beer that we choose when we need a moment of chill. We are talking all the time on this podcast. We're recording on uh, on Thursday afternoon, and it's the perfect time when we finish to just head out of here, grab a Coors Light, sit, relax, enjoy it. It's the only beer out there that's literally made to chill. They got new packaging right now, which is very exciting. The new design features clear skies that invite you to sit back, unwind, and drink it all in. As always, the iconic Coors Light Mountain still turn blue when your beer is as cold as the Rockies. It's a brand new look for the same ice cold refreshment. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. It's literally made to chill. It's as crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies, perfect for a moment to unwind. Coors Light is the official beer of Chicks in the Office. We love it. It's our go-to beer when we finish recording and it's time to relax. And it should be your go-to beer when you're listening to this show. If you're if you're taking some time to yourself, you got your, you know, you're listening, you're hanging out, you just want to chill, drink a Coors Light, or maybe you're watching your favorite TV show, drink a Coors Light. That's why Coors Light is the one we choose when we need to unwind. So when you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill, get Coors Light and the new look delivered straight to your door at get.coorslight.com. And always remember to celebrate responsibly. This is coming from the Coors Brewing Company in Golden, Colorado. We are here with a very special guest, Jen Atkin, celebrity hairstylist, a new book out called Blowing My Way to the Top. Absolutely genius title, by the way. There it is. You can see the cover. It looks so it's damn good. Gorgeous. Yes. And we are so, so excited to talk to you, Jen, because right before this, you looked at both of us and said, why does your hair look so good? And amazing I said compliment. to you, yeah, amazing compliment, by the way. Thank you. It really boosted yeah. my self-esteem. And- I'm not shitting you. I use all your products. I live and die by way. I'm not joking you. I thought that maybe you probably thought that I was just saying it to like make you feel good because you're the guest Butter on the show. Butter you up. <laughs> I, you can ask Fran, like I carry yeah. these products with me. Like I use the wave spray, the air dry foam, the leave-in conditioner, and uh, also your body cream. Like I really live and die by these products. <laughs> you're like weighed out head to toe. I love it. Absolutely. I'm obsessed. But uh, thanks for joining the show. Thank you for having me. This is so fun. And I meant every word I said. Um, 
you both have gorgeous hair and I'm so excited to be finally talking about this. I do want people to know that for people that can't see the book, there is a blow dryer in my hand and thus blowing my weight at the top. Yep. I just, not I just want to preface a penis. that. <laughs> yeah. not a penis. No. It's, it's, it's a blow dryer. <laughs> Harper Collins said no. So we have a blow dryer. <laughs> yeah. Jen Atkin it's, is not a porn star. She's a hairstylist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I've actually Googled the book a couple of times and seen like which category it's fallen into with some retailers. And I'm like, oh no, they think this might be an old porn story. <laughs> yeah. Erotica. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So well, crazy. the name is fantastic. I know as soon as um, we had booked this interview and I was looking, I was like, oh, my God, that's such, such a great name because it's catchy and it grabs your attention. Um, but obviously it makes sense. You are a hairstylist and this is how you have made your career. And now you you wrote this book. Um, and I will say, you know, on the cover, it says how to break the rules, find your purpose and create the life and career you deserve, which Sounds amazing. I like sign me up. I feel like everybody should read this book just from that. Yeah. And by the way, it really just came down to like, this was the book that I wish existed when I was in my early 20s and just moved to LA and didn't know anybody and got, you know, I've had like some hits and misses through the years. And I feel like I'm at a place now where I wanted to share that story, but also, you know, encourage people to take risks. And it's, Yeah, it's so fun. I want to just help everyone kind of skip the line. Yeah, it's going to be great to read because I I think a lot of people um, recognize you for your work and the things you have done and the people you have worked with. So getting to read your story and how you made your career is so exciting. Um, Can you give everyone a little background on kind of how you found yourself in L.A. and how you even like started doing hair? Yeah. So um, for those who don't know me, I work with celebrities and some of the like most beautiful faces and people in the world and have done so for a while. And I think like that's what kind of catapulted me into my social media success success is because uh, my clients have been so amazing and and uh, have really kind of like helped shine a light on me through the years. Um, But I wanted to really go back to like the girl that worked at Little Caesars and was like making crazy bread. (laughs) (laughs) because I you know my story really in a nutshell is like I grew up in a Mormon community my family's all Mormon still practicing Um, my best friend and I like wanted to roll me and Michelle it up and like it was like Britney Spears crossroads and we just packed our Honda Civics like dumped our high school boyfriends and decided to just like pursue this unknown world in LA and never looked back and she lives within five minutes of my house to this day 20 years later amazing we've been friends since we were 12 and you know I want to really just like share that story to help people understand that you know it's when you take those leaps and those scary scary risks that's when you like get the great reward on the other side yeah absolutely that's a really cool story and especially hearing that you are still friends with that, with that person you moved with, because, you know, some people, when they gain that little social media success, they may (laughs) drop some people or whatever it may be, but that's really cool to hear. Did you move to LA, like knowing you wanted to be a hairstylist or was it you moved to LA and you're like, all right, what can I do here? I knew like as a kid, I was not interested in the Bible and I like (laughs) cared more about like posters on my wall and pop culture. And I was always just obsessed with makeover scenes and movies. Like that's all I cared about was like true Beverly Hills and mannequin and she's all that. And like, I just loved, Oh my God. Can't wait. What's the one can't buy me. Love is so good. And is it, she's all that. She's all that is yeah. Freddie Prince jr. And yes. Yes. So like, I have always just been obsessed with like that concept of like making someone over and I have sleepovers in high school where we'd like pick like the quiet wallflower girl and invite her over and give her a full makeover, like glam session. Um, But yeah, I did not know it could be a career until I moved to LA and started working in a salon and kind of seeing like the ins and outs of it while I was feeding Bette Midler's meter. It was crazy. (laughs) So crazy. (laughs) But yeah, I always loved beauty. Yeah. Who was the person that connected you to every other celebrity that you now have worked with? How did you get into that space? I mean, honestly, I think it was just kind of like paying my dues. I write about it in the book because I really 
you know, want to like kind of teach people um, the way to navigate not only like your creativity, if you want to like work in hair or be an artist or whatever it is, but also managing like the business aspect of it. So, I mean, the gist of it, you guys need to get the book because I go into more detail, but it, it's just all about not being an asshole, you know, and just working hard and then like, keeping your chin up and, and not fucking people over and just, you know, keeping your eye on the prize, but also like taking care of yourself along the way. So, um, yeah, I, I feel like all of those things kind of, and even like my Mormon upbringing kind of helped me to get to where I am. Obviously pre Instagram was when I started in the salon. It's when you like hoped that like a good publicist would come in and sit in your chair for a blowout. And that happened. And it's one of my best friends to this day. Her name's Amanda Silverman. Shout out to her company called Lead because they're doing PR for my book, which is like full circle. And she kind of helped to introduce me to her colleagues, which got me Sofia Vergara as one of my first celebrity clients, right when Modern Family came out. And then it was like Hayden Panettiere. I was doing extensions for Britney Spears and then Nicole Richie, who I still like am friends with and love. Um, and then from there, like I met Lorraine Schwartz, who is this incredible jeweler and so well connected and takes care of people around her. And I was just blowing her hair out. She introduced me to Kim Kardashian, actually, for the first time ever to Oscar um, party. And yeah, the rest is history. It's really just about like staying in one place and networking and not being an asshole. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. It's such a, it's such a great story and not being an asshole is such great, it's such great advice to so many people, because I think s- people view Hollywood sometimes as just this crazy doggy dog world and that everybody is just trying to jump over each other. And if you kind of treat other people with respect good things come back to you and it kind of seems like you have climbed that ladder and the success has come for you and it's just really really cool and I feel like um with working with all these with all these celebrities is there like do people kind of expect you to know how, like I'm trying to word this the right way where who's my favorite client no, you know, I was going to ask that. Oh, I was going to ask that. Later I was going to. <laughs> I was going to ask more of like, do people assume that you have to put up with asshole celebrities? <laughs> you know, they exist for sure. Yeah. And I have to say, I, I have, I did not write about this in the book because I definitely respect NDAs. But yes. <laughs> I, in my, in my time, have definitely, I've only encountered like two or three, but they do exist, you know. And like yeah. now, in hindsight, I can see that like that person is going through their own thing and it probably hurt. And maybe it, not everyone is cut out for celebrity. I will say that. So I've been very fortunate that through my time, I've been able to kind of earn the ability to pick and choose who I work with. And right. that feels really good. Um, but yeah, it's like anything, you got to kiss a lot of frogs to meet the prince. And I think yep. that I've kind of done that throughout the years, but I don't have a ton of crazy horror stories like I have heard from other stylists in salons like the older starlet that came in and threw a brush at someone because she didn't like her blow dry you know like there's been or somebody canceled on someone and you just see people who like they go nuts you know it it's I've heard stories but I haven't had like a ton of horror stories thank god knock on wood that's good yeah <laughs> right and I feel like you have to be like a trustworthy person to get into the position that you are in. You know what I mean? You're around a lot of high profile people that they, I feel like they don't let a lot of people into their circle that they don't trust. Yeah. And that's another thing I really offer a lot of advice on. I mean, I don't know if a, the amount of people reading my book want to be celebrity stylists, but um, I think that that's one thing that has helped me also is like, I've always treated my clients like human beings and yeah. I for sure have had my like geek out moments. I think like working with Gwen Stefani and doing her for the cover of Vogue, I like had her poster on my wall in high school. And those are moments where I'm like, how is this my life? Like I literally like my hands shaking as I'm driving to set. Like (laughs) those are my like devil or Prada moment. But Mm -hmm. um, I think that like overall, I just have always kind of just treated my clients as human beings because they are. And, and I get so mad when in the past I've seen people who haven't respected them in the same way or feel like they're there to just get like shine from them or they just you know don't like respect them as they would any friend of theirs and um and abuse that relationship and so I really have like 
I, I've just learned through the years that, you know, you put good out, you'll get good back. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, you still have that hairstyle, you know, that hairstylist relationship when, when you, us, you know, normal people go get our, go get our hair done and we sit in that chair and all of a sudden you're like, talking about things in your life that you wouldn't tell anyone, but you're telling the woman who's doing your hair um, and you trust her. You trust her to do your hair. You trust her to listen to you and to yeah. kind of like be your soundboard for a lot of things where you kind of have that relationship. So yeah, it, I, I feel like that plays for like this. this. Yeah. Like I feel like that plays even at the, at the celebrity level where you gotta, you gotta trust that person. Cause that's a time and it's, probably a good vent sesh you're you, you get glam done for so long i feel like with some of these celebrities they got to sit in that chair for a long time they got to talk about something <laughs> yeah and i think um you know i opened the book up with like kind of giving a figure of how many hours i've spent talking to women in my chair and how many <laughs> people and i'm like where's my therapist license because <laughs> I, it really is such a personal relationship and I've been on the flip side of it. Like the minute I go and sit in someone's chair, I'm like spilling my guts and it feels like a therapeutic moment. Um, but with that comes responsibility. So I yeah. think, you know, and, and I actually have read so many books that like talk about the scientific, like if you're talking shit to somebody, they associate you with whatever story you're telling. And so it actually is like a negative reaction right. to you and your reputation. So it's like, I don't know. I think it's just, you know, loose li lips do sink ships. Yep, exactly. Yep. Do you find it hard to find the time to do everybody's hair? Like, are there, are there ever times where, you know, Bella Hadid needs her hair done, but Hailey Bieber also needs her hair done and you need <laughs> to decide between the two, whose hair am I going to do? I think like the busiest hectic days would be like Met Ball days, you know, but I'm really fortunate that like I've had a great team around me that my clients like work with, you know, when I'm not available and trust them. And so it's like a whole system. We'll have like one assistant will be with one girl and then I jump and everyone's like set up and ready. So by this point in my career, I have it really set up and we like try to keep, cause no one wants to feel like you're rushing through them, you know? So mm -hmm. you really do have to like keep your shit together and, and keep your cool. But um, I haven't, those are like the hectic days, but usually it all works out. You know, like I've had agents in the past. I'm like, oh, what are we going to do? So-and-so wants this time. And I have learned through the years, it always works out. And I, you know, I feel like we've had a few hiccups here and there, but nothing that's like, I haven't had any blow dryers or brushes thrown at me. So yeah, that's okay. definitely, thank God. <laughs> that's definitely a good thing. And you have gone, you know, you've created this mega success with this company, with your way products, with these products that everybody loves that are so great. What, and I'm sure you, I'm sure you talk about it in the book, but what are like, what, what were you worried about when you started that line and how, like, were you surprised when it kind of blew up in the way that it did? Oh yeah, for sure. Like I actually just posted about this on stories the other day because it was 2015. We were at fashion week and I was there with, I think Kylie and Kim. And I remember sitting down with New York times. I kind of don't remember it, but like they wanted to <laughs> interview me and I was like, okay, cool. So I squoze it in one of my days. And then like I started getting the total like fear before we launched a February, 2016. Like it was around December, I think. And I was like, what if this doesn't work? Like my mind has been set that like, I know what's missing in the marketplace. I've done my due diligence. I've worked for other brands. I understand the disconnect. I understand no one's talking to their um, audience or their customer, like a friend. It's always like talking down to women, making you feel bad about how you look, all of it. And I was like, I just, in my gut, I want this to work so badly. But of course I was freaking out. Then the New York Times thing comes out and calls me the most influential hairstylist in the world. I was like, oh my God, now I feel so much fear that like eyes are on me and I'm like, oh my God, this has to work. I pray to God. And, you know, I, I feel like I just, it, you kind of go through waves. I was like doubting myself and I'd be like, no, 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 I got this. And I doubt myself. And February 3rd, 2016 is when we launched. And I remember just like literally, I was at work, but I remember like taking breaks and going on my phone because it was like Instagram was blowing up. And I just remember taking moments to just cry and sob and like write tear filled, like, oh my God, thank you so much for posting, you know, because like 
the people who posted get paid a lot of money to post about stuff. And, and at the time, Instagram wasn't like the shopping mall that it is now, you know? So like to really like post about a product that you love in 2016, it really meant that like you believed in it or you like really were supporting that person. So yeah, it was a whirlwind day for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I was influenced by that because I <laughs> went and bought a bunch of the products. Um, I remember watching, I can't remember exactly who it was, but somebody's hair tutorial on YouTube and they were, you know, using a bunch of products, but they were like, I use the way wave spray and their waves came out so good. And I have like a natural wave to my hair, but I've never really used a pro I would just like put in a braid put some hairspray on it let it loose or whatever but I had never used a product to actually just like spray in my hair let it dry put it in a towel whatever it is and I got the wave spray and I've been obsessed with it ever since I use the leave-in conditioner I, I like I said I use it all and the products are really really amazing I I've tried a lot of hair products you know leave-in conditioners I I've gone through my fair share of those and your products are just really, really quality, I have to say. Thank you. Honestly, Wave Spray is one of our first products we launched with. Still a hero product to this day. It's insane. And I was so, like, over having products that had a lot of alcohol that would dry your hair or, like, make it feel sticky or look weird. Mm-hmm. And Wave Spray, even if you're just doing a blowout, like, you don't even have to have, like, waves. You can, like, spray it in, do a blowout, and you'll just see so much volume. It's, like, one of my faves. It's so good. And by the way, you're being really calm about your waves. Your waves are like perfect waves. Oh, thank you. Well, that with the help of you. So there you go. (laughs) Yeah. Rhea has had to go through some some convincing with the with the natural waves sometimes because she's always like, does it look messy? Like I should blow dry her hair, get it blown. I'm like, you don't. Because you never re- you never appreciate the hair that's on your own head, right? You look yeah. at everybody no else's one hair. Does. <laughs> no one does. Guys, it starts young too. Like every woman that's ever sat in my chair, if she has curly hair, she wants straight hair. If she has straight hair, she wishes it was curly. If it's thin, she wants thick. If it's too thick, she wishes it was thinner. Like we're crazy beings. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it was like I had to tell Rhea like, hey, you're <laughs> – you're- natural hair is so beautiful at the way like people pay a lot of money for waves like that like just yeah leave it (laughs) yeah my boyfriend says to me all the time like this is his favorite way that I wear my hair and every time like I'm like I'm gonna go do he's like but what it just looks so good like that he's like I love your curly hair and I had somebody blowing my hair out the other day that was like have you ever uh, tried like doing waves to your hair? I feel like that would look good. And I was like, oh, why am I even here, lady? Like, let me just get out of the chair then. <laughs> You're like, I've got it down already. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, how much has your team grown since the company has started? Because, I mean, you've seen major pickup, right? I honestly have like stats locked and loaded. We have, <laughs> oh, you know, since I want to say... We moved into like our flagship January 2020, like our Way HQ that is so gorgeous, um, designed by Maison Trouvaillet, the incredible interior designers. And we have like a studio. It's so great. And then lockdown happened. So we haven't been able to go in there. But we have, I think, about 40, I want to say 43. Yeah, it's grown a lot. And Um, but with that, like my, I always tell the team this too, like, I always just want to create a work environment because I've never been in like an office environment until now. And I always want to just, I'm always asking like, what did you hate about your last job? Like, you know, I want to just always make it feel like a interactive, fun environment where like, you know, people are excited to be there. Everyone feels like their voices are heard. And it's just like good music in the background, kombucha on top. You know, like I want it yeah. to really be like a fun company to work for. We just did a group company Zoom um, where we learned how to do charcuterie boards. And it was maybe the best day of my life. It's a fun. amazing skill because who doesn't love a good charcuterie yeah. board? <laughs> oh, by the way, there's like a whole like art to it. Like I learned about meat rivers. Like it's just, it's a lot. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. the team has grown. It's grown a lot. And I always want to keep that like grassroots feeling. You know what I mean? Like I don't ever want to feel like, because everything I wanted the brand to be on paper was everything that other brands were not because they were so corporate. And majority when I did all the research was like owned by like white older men. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just felt like a huge responsibility to like, keep, keep the coolness. I I think that sometimes, you know, I don't know too much about it, but the beauty world and these 
companies, you don't realize that so many of them are owned by the same parent companies. And like it, it all gets that's where it all does get very corporate. So to have your your own thing, your own kind of boss woman situation is really, really cool, which is why I think everybody should also read your book because <laughs> right. you know, yeah, I feel like we're going to feel like we're going to learn a lot of tips on how to, you know, be a great boss lady. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to give like, again, like I said, really great advice on how to run your own business if you're a freelance person, how to hire and nurture, sorry, how to hire and nurture women, because that was really important for me. Um, You know, I think just like finding a mentor too, like what that looks like, because it doesn't have to be somebody that you know, you know, it can be somebody who like, I hope that wasn't me, sorry. No, no, it's okay. I just wanted to... uh, really like give the power to like navigate through your work and life and and the obstacles that come with both. Absolutely. Do you think that you'll open a salon? Not that you'll work at, but just one that you hire a team for. So weird. You say that we have a ton of really exciting stuff happening over at main addicts. And like, I would have said no, but I just in the past week, like I went to my friend's salon last night and cut, a couple of friends. And I was like, I kind of miss this. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. You know, I mean, the goal when you're in a salon is like, I want to be an editorial stylist. I want to do backstage. And I did those things. And then it was like, I want to be a celebrity stylist. And I did those things. And we'll see. I don't know. I really do love like nurturing younger talent. So maybe that could be a spot where I do that. So I don't know. We'll see. You can call it the way and then just have all your products in there. There you yeah. go. <laughs> There's the or I call yeah. it Uni- United Hairlines. Yeah, I love that. That's great. All the planes I've gone on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. I mean, there's so many, there's like, I'm sure so many cool opportunities. I would love to watch like, you know, there's all these beauty reality shows and fashion shows and competition shows. Like I would love one that was about hair. Like, I feel like that would be perfect for you. (laughs) Well, I have a show for you, by the way, there's a show on HBO max called hot dog. And it's all about dog grooming competition. Oh, Oh. so good. Now that that is right up Fran's alley. (laughs) It's got like just Rona, who is like a celebrity dog groomer. She's so like amazing. It's such a fun show. Oh, amazing. I'm gonna have to check that out because forget people. I'd rather watch it. I'd rather watch it for dogs. So that's, yeah. that's, that's great. By um, the way, that is my dream come true too. Like if I were yeah. to open salons for sure, you come in, your dog can also come in. Cause we've got a grooming station next door. Boom. That's genius. genius. Absolutely genius idea. Uh, Jen, I, I also just saw pictures in architectural digest of your house. And I got to say f- absolutely phenomenal. So, so gorgeous. Um, you. you like, just kind of obsessed with everything, everything in it. How long and like, what was the process of, of kind of getting your house together? Oh my God. Well, it's been a year and a half probably since we moved in. Um, This is like our adult house. And I kind of feel like I always want to give that disclaimer because I don't want people to think I'm like showing off. My husband and I have worked our asses off for like 10 years to be able to like buy furniture that we like. And we've, you know, done like sponsored things in the past, but this, this was, we were like, okay, we're in our late thirties. <clears throat> okay, fine. I'm 40 right now. But <laughs> I was like, we need to like hunker down and actually like make the home that we really, really like have dreamed of. And he's so good. I can't take credit guys. I honestly go to work and I live here. Like my husband and Eric from Maison Trouvaille have such a great eye, but I got to tell you, I didn't realize what a big deal AD is. Like I had more people reach out than like anything ever. Like everyone was so psyched about that. And they, put like four pictures of ours on their grid, which they don't do that often. And I was like, so happy for my husband. This is like, honestly, his dream come true. Yeah. I mean, as far as design goes that I think that is like the top of the top where people are like, wow, you did a great job. If AD call, like if AD wants to, to profile what, what you got going on. So it was really, really cool. Kudos to your husband that he did an incredible job. You guys really built something so incredible. And you guys, you and you and Mike seem like, I hate saying goal. Like I hate when I say couples, I'm like, you guys are relationship goals, but like you guys really um, seem like you mesh so well. Like how do you kind of balance the home husband life with the, with the work life? Yeah. Therapy. Yeah. You know, like we (laughs) both have invested in therapy through the years. And I think that that is something that like um, we're both Pisces. I think that helps 
dating, I really honestly, guys, I think dating your own sign for the single people out there, it somehow works. Like he understands me. I understand him. We're both Pisces. So like we love to like be affectionate, but then we also like, like our loner time to be Mm -hmm. creatives. And like, we really do kind of push one another to greatness, I think. And that's what is really important. But I also like screamed at him two weeks ago. So, you know, it's not all cookies and cream. Mm -hmm. Um, It is definitely, you know, I would, I I feel like I'm going to let you, are you guys married? No, No. but we're both in, we're both in, we're both in relationships. (laughs) We're both in relationships for like three ish years with our boyfriends. Yeah. Can I ask roughly like what age are you guys? I'm 23. You're going to hate us. (laughs) I'm 26. (laughs) Oh my God. Okay. No, I'm don't hate you. I'm so happy yeah. for you. But I will say this, like, I'm going to make my kids one day, like sign a contract that they can't get married before like 29 or 30. Cause I have to say like, really like living my life and like, like having my like Italian bartender flings, I have no regrets. And I feel like really like I was ready. My husband was ready. So like it works, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Shout out, shout out to I, the Italian bartenders. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I remember you posting something about how you like never thought you wanted to be married until you met your current husband. Is that true? For Did sure. I make that up? <laughs> yeah. Like even even when he asked, I was like, what? Like, I just never, you know, and I think, again, like therapy has taught me that that was like me kind of like rebelling against like the mm-hmm. goody two shoe Mormon upbringing that I had. Yeah. And I think I finally got out of my own way. And did it. And I have to say, it's incredible. It's so great being on a team. And it is just nice to have that like constant support. But I will also say that my husband doesn't like complete me. He, yeah. You know what I mean? I like, take him away. Yep. He hates my he hates when I say this, but I'm like, I love you with all my heart. And I'm so happy we're married. But like, if we didn't like if we broke up, like I know in my heart, like I'll be okay. And you'll be okay. And I really truly think like, knowing that where we both like show up as full human beings has helped so much. So like, yeah, it's okay to not be like obsessed with your relationship and only that, like you need to really have your own life and your own hobbies and like take care of you. Definitely. Absolutely. I feel like the relationship is so much better when you yourself are just comfortable with yourself. You love yourself, your partner. It feels the same way because like you said, you guys, you know, both Pisces. So you like, like to be together, but you also like to be alone. And I feel like when people don't understand alone time in a relationship, it just creates a huge problem. Like, no, you need to be with me. It's like, no, like I'm a human being. I gotta, yeah. I gotta chill out yeah. alone. Yeah. Codependency guys, look it up. It's, it's yeah. something you got to work through. But um, again, like therapy, 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 because like I just went to the Hoffman Institute last year and learned so much about like, they break down like patterns that you have from your parents and how like sometimes like the bad things that you learned when you were little show up when you're like fighting with your, you know, um, significant other. So now I'm like, okay, before I blow up, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling like this? Like therapy really does help a lot because we're all just screwed up, you know, all of us. Yeah, absolutely. I actually just recently started going to therapy and each week I feel the same way. I'm like, Ugh, like I don't want to go and then afterwards I'm like that was great like I feel so much better so I will say it definitely it definitely helps I agree therapy is the way yeah the bummer situation with therapy though is like you'll be like fully crying they're like oh my god that is how I feel about my dad and they're like okay so it's been 45 minutes yeah we're gonna need to wrap up and you're like oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always. Uh, our, our session has come to an end. I'll see you next week. And they just hang up and you're like, wait, that was it. Now, now we can't yeah. really talk anymore. <laughs> like, I want to cry and talk more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so it is true. Rhea always jokes about how she's like, I wish my therapist like would tell me more about her life. <laughs> so fucking interested and i think it's because we interview people all the time so i'm used to like over zoom asking questions and i'll like go to ask her about her life and i'm like this is just not right this is not it she she doesn't have it she's like we're not friends <laughs> she's like you need to leave um yeah. i have to say i was the same way guys when i started i was like i talk about myself all day long in the salon like mm-hmm. all i do is i catch up with clients that i've had for five or ten years and like we talk about like where i'm at today and like I felt so weird paying somebody because I was like, what I talk about and get like feedback all day from people. But I guess it's a little bit better to have somebody who's trained to uh, dissect your, your issues. That's why they call it therapy. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Exactly. Or just go get a haircut. Same thing. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) 
Because let me tell Absolutely. you, that hell, that definitely helps too. Uh, Jen, thank you so much for joining us. We are so, so excited for your book. Everybody can go check it out. Go buy it. Go read it. Blowing my way to the top. Um, I think everyone will learn a lot of really great things um, from this book. I think you have a lot to share. It's a beautiful cover. You look I beautiful. Do. Thank <laughs> you. Guys, I got to tell you, like, I really wanted to give you, again, like a guide, but like teach you how to navigate through these really hard times, how like meditation changed my life. I know it sounds so LA, so cliche, but like, like it really, truly has helped me get through 2020 and just talk about, you know, how to like, how to like keep track of your relationships and like keep up with it all and take care of yourself and also, you know, reach for your goals and be a boss bitch. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. And it's holiday season, so it kind of feels like the perf- hol- perfect holiday gift. If you want to give somebody this, just saying. Just saying. Thank you guys yep. so much for having yeah. me. This is fun. <laughs> Thank you so Thanks. much, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Bye. Bye. All right, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We hope you have a fantastic weekend. We'll talk to you guys on Monday. We love you very, very much. Bye. Bye.